Welcome everyone. Thank you for coming today. We are really excited to have everyone here. Um, this is going to be a, a webinar about uh, as an introduction to Past Perfect Online, which we also refer to as PPO for short. My name is Jessica, and I'm one of the Past Perfect Online specialists here. I also have with me uh, Melissa and Allison, and together the three of us make up the Past Perfect Online support team. We're the people that you talk to if you have sales questions or um, support questions about Past Perfect Online. We're the ones that walk you through the process or make changes to your site design. Um, you can always give us a call um, at the 1-800 number um, and just ask for a member of the PPO team. Um, or you can email all three of us at ppo-support at museumsoftware.com. Before we dive in, um, I have a few brief technical notes. If we get disconnected on our end at any point, please wait for just a few minutes to see if the presentation comes back. Um, if you get disconnected on your end, um, you can always try clicking the link in your email again to rejoin the webinar. Um, if that doesn't work, um, try giving our office a call. Um, and if the connection is still down after a few minutes, um, please keep an eye on your email for either a link to a recording of the webinar or a time for when the webinar will be rescheduled. We're going to start by just doing um, a brief poll. Um, going to come up on your screen here. So go ahead and select the option um, that best descri describes your organization. We'll leave this poll up for, for just a minute or so. All right, we'll, we'll leave it up for another 10 seconds. So if you haven't answered, go ahead and make your selection. OK. So thank you all for your information. We're going to share the poll results on the screen. Um, and it's great, sure to, great to see such a range of participants here. Um, we think you'll all get some great information um, from this webinar. Um, to give you uh, a, an overview about what's going to happen, um, the presentation will last um, about 30 minutes, um, and there will be time at the end for questions. Um, as we go, feel, please feel free to type in your questions into the GoToWebinar chat window that's on the side of your screen. Um, we will answer them at the end. Um, we're going to start off with a brief history of Past Perfect Online, and then we'll review what Past Perfect Online is and take a look at an example site to see what your visitors will experience. Um, and then we'll discuss how it works from your end in Past Perfect for selecting the records and building your site. Once we've covered those main topics, we'll discuss the product pricing. And finally, we will go over any questions that you guys have. Um, please note that this webinar is designed to focus on the highlights of the process. It's not meant to be a step-by-step -step tutorial video. Um, the steps can be more in-depth than what we'll go into today um, to have further customizations to your site, um, but those steps take more time than we have. Um, so the Past Perfect Online product actually started in 2005 as a response to um, a few clients who attempted to share their Past Perfect data online using a third-party solution. The expense to these organizations was tremendous, both financially and time-wise. Um, so we then created PassPerfect Online, a standardized product, which helps, uh, which allows PassPerfect clients to easily share their data and images online for minimal cost. Um, and in 2015, uh, PassPerfect Online was completely revamped for version 5 clients. Um, the new version has a more modern look, new search capabilities, simpler ways to customize the site and quicker upload times. Uh, in this webinar, we'll show you how this revamped version of Past Perfect Online is the easiest and most cost-effective solution available for sharing your collections online. So now I'm going to pass the mic to Melissa, um, and she's going to start with a quick review of what Past Perfect Online is. OK, 
So what is Pass Perfect Online? Well, Pass Perfect Online is an optional upgrade to your Pass Perfect program that creates an online search tool where you can share your Past Perfect records. In addition to sharing your featured collections, Past Perfect Online is a great way to gain exposure for items in your collection that might not be readily available at the museum and a way to allow access to items that are fragile or in need of special environmental conditions. Each site is customized to complement your existing website. When we design the Past Perfect online site for you, we'll take a look at the colors and logos on your main site and to incorporate them into your Past Perfect online site. Let's take a look at a sample site now. The page we're looking at is the site's landing page. The text on this page is fully customizable and is a great place for sharing things like search tips, quick links to featured items, donor acknowledgments, and information about your organization and collection. Visitors can view your site from any device. Currently, we're viewing the page on a full-size computer screen, but let's look to see how the page would display on a smaller screen, such as a tablet or a smartphone. Because the site has a built-in responsive design, the page layout will change based on the width of your screen, making it mobile-friendly. Let's head back to the full screen view. Now we're going to talk about the different ways to search using Past Perfect Online. First, let's look at random images. Random images is a great way for visitors to search if they don't know exactly what they're looking for. It's a way for your visitors to immerse themselves in your collection. You have the ability to click on an image to view a larger copy. If you've chosen to watermark your images, this larger copy is where that watermark will appear. Another option for searching is keyword search. Keyword searching is a function that many of your visitors will already be familiar with as it's similar to a Google search. If you put more than one word in the search box, your results will include any record that contains any of the terms you're searching for. If you want to search for records that contain both terms, you can type in the word and between your words. Right now, we're going to do a search just for the word quilt. Once we have our results, we can click on a record to see the full detail. Let's take a look at this second item, our quilt. On the right side of the screen, you can see the data about this item. Only the fields that you select will be shared online. On the left side of the screen, we have the images that are associated with this item. You can have multiple images per record, and just like on the random images screen, you can click on an image to view a larger copy. There are other ways to search too. Let's find our quilt using the advanced search option. Advanced search allows you to be more specific as you can narrow down which fields are being searched. Let's look in the collection field for Rocky Pine Ranch. If you want to search for a phrase, you would put your search text in quotes like we're doing here. Once we click on search, we'll see our results on the right side of the page and we can scroll down until we find our quilt. Let's look at one more way that we can find our quilt record. Past Perfect Online's new search by term option allows you to search the people, creators, search terms, and subjects fields. When you click on a letter, you'll see all of the associated terms. We'll look under search terms for the letter M and then select Macmillan Family. Of these five results, we can scroll down to find our quilt. Maybe as we're looking through these results though, something else catches our eye. The great thing about Past Perfect Online is how easy it is to discover new things. Let's take a look at this autograph album. One of the things we notice right away about this autograph album is that there are lots of great pictures for us to view. If you click on an image, you'll see a larger copy. 
And you can use the Next and Prior buttons on the sides of the screen to scroll through and view the other images. You'll also notice an image request form on the lower right corner of this image. When visitors fill out this form, it will be sent directly to you to start the communication between you and your visitor. You can then contact the visitor to discuss the specifics of what they need. There are two other forms similar to the image request form. Both appear on the top right of the catalog record. The first form we have is email a friend. Visitors can use this form to email the link of the item to others with the same interests, to other researchers, or even to themselves. The email a friend form empowers your visitors to share your links and enables your visitors to promote your collection and increase traffic to your site. We also have a feedback form. This form will increase the interaction between your web visitors and your staff. Visitors can send you feedback with personal stories about items or photos, or send you information to help identify unknown people, places, or events. Another great thing about Past Perfect Online is how you can add depth to your collection by including fields like search terms and people, which will link to additional information. This autograph album was owned by Ernestine McMillan Hilton. And if we want to know more about her, we can click on her name in the People field to see her person record. This record for Ernestine is populated from her People Biography record in Past Perfect and also shows all the catalog records where her name appears. We can see that the autograph album is listed here, along with other records that she is associated with. We can click on any record that sparks our interest to learn more. Let's click on this candlestick. We'll use this candlestick record to explain how you can select items to share online. So let's head back into our Past Perfect program. We'll head into Objects and we can see we're already on our candlestick record. At the bottom of the screen, there's a checkbox for Include in Web Export. Any record that has a check in this box will appear on your site. It's easy to select records to go online. We're going to show first how to select an individual record, and then we'll show how to select records through a query. When we click Next at the top of the screen, we arrive at our next record, a chair. We can see at the bottom that the record is not selected to go online. To select the record, we would click Edit at the top of the screen, add a check in the Include in Web Export box, and then at the top, click Save. By default, all images attached to this record are also selected for the web. We are just showing you an object record right now, but we do want to point out that photos, archives, library, people, and other record types all have this similar type of checkbox and can be selected to go online just as easily. Now let's look at how to select catalog records en masse through a query. When we click Query at the top of the screen, we can run a query for collection, begins with, Rocky Pine Ranch. Once we have our results, we can click the Include on Web button on the left side of the screen, and all of these items will be marked to go online. Please note that selecting a record or records to go online will not immediately display them on your site. You do need to create and upload your files, which is a process we will discuss shortly. Now that you've selected your items, you can select the fields of data that you want to share. From the main menu of Past Perfect, we can head into the Past Perfect Online Web Publishing Wizard. On the Select Data Fields to Include screen, we can double click on a field to add it. Let's find the date field and add it to our site. After the date field is selected, all object records with the date field populated will show that date online. 
You can also change the order of your fields. Once the field has been selected, you can drag it up or down. We will move the date field between description and artist. Again, just like when we were selecting records, we are just showing how to select fields for object records, but selecting fields for other record types is just as easy. Once your records and fields are selected, the basics are done. At this point, you can go into more depth with additional steps to fully tailor the sites to your needs, or you can jump right to creating the files using the default settings, which is what we're going to do now. Creating files takes just a single click. This process will create a web-friendly copy of the data and images you've selected to share online. Before creating your files, you may want to set up a watermark for your image. The watermark setup screen can be accessed in the lower right corner of the Create screen. From here, you can change the text, color, and position of your watermark. Once you've made your selections, you can apply a test watermark to see how it will display on your site. Now that we've made our choices, let's start cre creating our files. Anytime you make a change in PassPerfect that you want to appear on your site, you will need to go through this process of creating files. Most organizations get into the habit of updating their site about one time per month. While these files are being created, let's talk about keeping your data and images secure. You are in control over which records, data fields, and images are shared. The create process only looks for records where the include in web export checkbox is checked. And this process will only grab the fields that you have selected in the previous step. Certain fields can't even be selected by mistake. Location and value fields are impossible to include. This was an intentional design choice made to help keep your collection items secure. Images are also protected. While the images are being created, you'll see them flash across the screen as they're doing now. During this process, they're being resized and watermarked. Images are resized to web-friendly dimensions, making them more than suitable for viewing online, but not high enough quality for print reproduction. Resizing the images also helps your page load quickly. If you choose to include a watermark, it will be an embedded text watermark. Since the watermark is embedded in the image and not just overlaid on top of the image, it would be extremely difficult to remove the watermark and have an even marginally decent image left at the end. We should also point out that the watermark you apply is only applied to the images that are shared online and will not have any impact on your images in PassPerfect. We should also note that you have the ability to deselect specific images for catalog records, so only the images you want to share will go online. Once the files are done being created, we would go to the next step to upload them. We aren't actually going to do this step right now since it will take a bit more time than we have. The average time to upload your files is about 20 to 30 minutes. However, this does depend on factors like your internet connection and the number of records and images you're sharing. We've prepared our site ahead of time, so let's head back and do a keyword search for our chair. If we scroll down, we can see that our chair record is online. And when we click on the record to view the full file, we can see that the date field is displayed. We can also click on the thumbnail image to view our watermark. With all of these easy to use features, you may be wondering how PassPerfect Online can fit into your budget, but it is actually a very affordable solution. The pricing for PassPerfect Online consists of two parts, a one-time setup fee, and an annual hosting fee based on the number of records you have online. Annual hosting is available for less than $1 a day for up to 10,000 catalog records, plus any of the attached images with those records. Besides the hosting of your data and web-friendly images, what else does the PassPerfect online hosting include? 
your site will come with a fully customized design to complement your museum's existing homepage. You'll have access to a statistics report providing data on the number of searches performed on your site. You'll also have the option to submit your site for Google indexing, which will allow your records to be found through Google searches. Your PassPerfect online hosting also includes PassPerfect online technical support. We are here and happy to help you. Whether you want to change the design of your site or you want us to walk you through the process of creating and uploading files, we're happy to assist. To review, Past Perfect Online is easy for both you and your visitors. Visitors can use different search options to find the things that match their interests. Your site will include email forms for visitors to contact you or share the site with others. The custom site design and mobile-friendly design make the site easy to view on any device. And selecting records is simple. Once your records are selected, the step-by-step -step wizard will guide you through the rest. PassPerfect Online is secure. You control which records and fields go online, and some fields are automatically excluded for extra security. Your web images will be resized and can be watermarked. Test Perfect Online is affordable. There's a one-time setup fee, and then for less than $1 a day, you can host your data and web-friendly images. Your Pass Perfect Online also includes technical support for Pass Perfect Online questions, server maintenance, and automatic Pass Perfect Online updates. If you'd like to know more, you can visit the example site we used in this video, or you can view other organizations' Pass Perfect Online sites at passperfect-online.com. Thank you all for coming. We will be sending a follow-up email tomorrow morning with some helpful links, including a link to the recording of this webinar. The email will also have a short survey about this webinar, and we would appreciate you taking a few minutes to fill it out. We really value your feedback. And now before we get to your questions, we do want to remind you of a special offer we have through the end of this month. If you order Pass Perfect Online setup and hosting before September 30th, 2016, we'll waive the setup fee, which is a savings of $285. Now I'm going to turn this over to Allison, who will answer your questions. Thank you, Melissa, and hi, everyone. We are going to take some time right now to answer some of the questions we've received throughout the webinar. As we mentioned before, if we don't get to your question right now, you can expect a call or email from one of us within the next day. The first question that we had come in here was asking about the site design and if you have the ability to make any additional changes. Although the site does come pre-designed for you, uh, that's something we do as part of that setup, it can be changed at any time. We're happy to help you with this, but it is something that if you're comfortable doing on your own, you can also make those changes directly. A few people also asked, uh, can I update a record that is already online? And that's a very straightforward process that we sort of already showed throughout the webinar here, um, where you'll just need to go into Past Perfect, make the changes to the record itself, and then create and upload through that web publishing wizard. It's a very similar process if you'd like to remove a record from your site, where in Past Perfect, you'll uncheck the Include in Web Export box and then create and upload your files. Another question I see here is um, about those feedback forms and the image request. Um, can they be removed? The image request, email a friend, and feedback form can all be disabled. Um, you could have none of them, all three of them, or some combination. Another common question that we received here was asking about that Google indexing and whether or not your site will be automatically indexed. That's something that we don't do until you request it. We do want to make sure that you're happy with your site, that it meets your professional standards. Um, it is something that we will do for free uh, whenever you're ready to make that site more publicly accessible. The next question that I see here um, is can we change how the search results appear? 
And just for people who might not be sure what that question is asking, I'm going to bring up our site again and do a keyword search for Hilton. And you can see that these first three, res three results have the object ID and the object name as the link to view the full record. If we go to one of these records, we'll see that the catalog number, the object ID, and the object name are the first two fields that we've selected to go online in the web publishing wizard. So that's what's going to be used as that search result link. If you'd like to use something different, like title or collection as part of that link, you would just need to reorder the fields in the web publishing wizard, create and then upload your files. Um, another question that I've got in here about the site itself is talking about these buttons on the left hand side, archives, photos, libraries, and objects, and what they are. This is something that we've added as part of the revamped Past Perfect Online, and they're catalog specific buttons. So if your web visitors wanted to just scroll through and browse your objects or search only one catalog, they can do so without needing to look through your entire collection. Uh, another question that I see here is asking um, about the search terms and whether they're the same ones that are in your database. Um, so that is the search by term here. So for the people, creators, search terms, and subjects, um, that is something where it takes the data that is actually being exported to the online site. So you won't have to worry about someone clicking on here and not getting any results because it is everything that you are sharing. Um, on a similar note to the feedback forms, um, you can actually choose not to share one or all of these. This search by term is something that is optional. Um, I've got another question here asking about the fields in the advanced search and whether or not those can be customized. This is one of those uh, further, further customizations that you can do through the web publishing wizard that we didn't touch on here today, um, but you can select which of these fields are all available. You can rename them however you think will be most helpful for your web visitors. And you can also choose which fields are being searched during that. Um, if that is something that you have specific questions about, definitely reach out to us. We're happy to answer them. It's just a little bit more complicated than what we can address here right now. Um, and then the last question that I have for you right now is um, when I select fields to uh, share online, do I choose the same fields for all four catalogs or can they be different? And that is something that you can set them up individually by catalog. Um, I'm actually going to head back into Past Perfect here. And if we go back to the data fields to include, where we chose our date field, you'll see we've got different tabs up here for the various record types. So if we wanted to choose something different for photos, we can select it by each catalog. Um, I'm going to look for the next question that we've got here. Um, let's um, so if you um, are trying to select which, which, Im which images to view online, how do you do so? Um, as Melissa already mentioned, when we were selecting files, that, that is done automatically. When you select a record, all of the attached images are, um, are automatically included. But you can always go into the image management, uh, view the image metadata, and remove individual images uh, from on, from, that are available online. And the next question I've got here um, is asking about integrating Past Perfect Online into your existing website. Um, that is something that is actually pretty easy to do, but we unfortunately can't help you with it. Um, you would just need to add a link or a button on your page that would take your visitors over to your Past Perfect Online site. 
Um, because we do host the site, uh, that's mentioned in the annual hosting cost, it isn't something that would be built into your main website. Um, it is going to be separate, but you can very easily add a link. Um, and then the next question that I have here is asking about about um, just adding a few images at a time, or if you could just add a few records, or if you, you have to have everything set up and ready to go. Um, so that is something that you can do in stages. You don't need to put everything up right away. Um, once you do have everything online, most organizations will go through and only update their site periodically, maybe every few months. Um, but as you're getting started, a lot of places will just upload kind of a, a sample um, where you are only doing uh, maybe 100 or, or a small selection of records to make sure that the fields you've included, uh, the search mapping, everything is good, um, and then just continually adding on from there. So um, I'm actually going to pass it over to Melissa. Um, so hold on for just a second. Okay, you guys are putting some really great questions in here. Um, one that we had was actually just about the sale we have through the end of the month. We do just want to be clear that all you have to do before September 30th is place the order for the setup and the hosting. After that, if you need to take some time to select your records, go through things to make sure they meet your professional standards, that's fine. You don't have to also upload to the site before the end of the month. Um, it's just that the order needs to be placed by that time to take advantage of waiving that setup fee. Um, and if you do have more questions about the sale, just give us a call when this is all uh, finished up and we can talk with you about that. So back to some of the technical questions here. Um, we have a question of do we have to show all four catalogs on the site um, or for instance could you just have the objects button displaying? So if you head back to the site for a second, um, those buttons on the left, the catalog buttons, archives, photos, libraries, and objects, they are things that you can hide if you like. Um, we can help you do that, but you will have the ability to do that on your own as well. So certainly, if you're only sharing object records, you can hide those other three buttons if they're not needed for you. So that's something you can easily do. All right, we had another question here. When we're in a search by term, what is creator referring to? Um, creator is going to be um, something like the photographer, the author, um, the artist. Um, so anything in those fields um, would show up under creator. Um, they're basically the person who was the one who created that item. Okay. I think we might be good with our questions here unless there's any others that Allison and Jessica are kind of looking through to see what needs to be answered. Yeah, I think that we're okay. So if we didn't answer any of your questions, um, definitely expect to hear from one of us in the next day or two. Um, we will be in touch with you either via email or we'll give you a call. And if you think of anything else that you didn't get a chance to put in during the webinar, something that pops up as you're reviewing it when we send that link out tomorrow, please call us, email us. We really are here and happy to help you. So thanks again for coming, um, and thanks for your interest in Path Perfect Online. <laughs>